my name is Donna Wall, and I'm a Women's Studies Master's student at the State University of New York, Albany. In December, I graduated from the University of Northern Colorado with a degree in political science and a minor in women's studies. As an undergraduate student, I served as the Women Resource Center intern, as the arts editor and political writer for the student newspaper, The Mirror, uh, a student senator, and I was selected as a Ronald E. McNair Scholar. Will Patty Solis Doyle please join me at the podium? Patty Solis Doyle is an outstanding political organizer and campaign strategist who has helped lead several high profile campaigns in the last 20 years. When I was informed that I would be introducing her, my reaction was one of unparalleled excitement. As a feminist political junkie who came of age during the Clinton administration, the opportunity to introduce one of the women who inspired me to become politically active is one of the greatest privileges I have had. As a graduate of Northwestern University, Patty joined Bill Clinton's 1992 presidential campaign and began working for First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. From 1993 to 2001, she worked closely with Clinton as the director of scheduling in advance for the First Lady. She also worked to promote the Clinton administration's policies on children, health care, and women's issues, and to assist with political support for the Democratic candidates nationwide. In 2000, she took a leave of absence from her White House role to serve as the Chief of Staff for Hillary Rodham Clinton's 2000 Senate campaign. As Chief of Staff, she managed the campaign's day-to-day -day operations and coordinated press, policy, political, and scheduling operations. Following Clinton's successful election to the U.S. Senate, Patty founded, founded and served as Executive Director of HillPAC, Clinton's Political Action Committee, and Friends of Hillary. Clinton's re-election campaign. As executive director, she managed the public relations strategy, <laughs> fundraising, outreach, and campaign staffing. Combined together, the two organizations represented one of the largest and most successful Democratic fundraising operations in the country. Patty's work for Senator Clinton did not end there. From January 2007 to February 2008, she served as the campaign manager for Clinton's historic presidential bid. The campaign was also historic for Patty, who became the first Hispanic woman to lead a major American presidential campaign. Following the primary election, she became the chief of staff for vice presidential operations for the Obama for America campaign, helping lead Barack Obama to victory as the 44th president of the United States. Today, Patty is a partner at Utreat and Phillips in Washington, D.C., a law firm that offers strategic counseling and representation before Congress and the executive agencies and specializes in federal and state campaign finance and ethic laws. She is also president of Solus Strategies, which offers strategic communication and political advisory services. Patty was the recipient of the 2007 Latinas of Excellence Award from Hispanic Magazine, and she received the Semper Inspirian Award from Semper Majeure Magazine. Impressively, Hispanic Business Magazine recently named her one of America's 100 most influential Hispanics. Patty Solis Doyle, your political skills and achievements are admirable. We look forward to finding out what you will do next. It is with respect and gratitude for your work that the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders, organizers and attendees, including myself, honor and recognize you as a 2010 Woman of Distinction. Thank you so much. Um, um, it's hard to go forth. <laughs> I've been sitting here with uh, this overwhelming sense of I am not worthy. I am just not worthy, not just of these fabulous women on stage with me, but the women who have been presenting. And um, you just know by hearing them and watching them that they are going to do great things and will be standing on this stage receiving this award in about two years. Um, so, as Donna said, I've been involved in politics for more than 20 years. Um, and I've been a part of some of the most amazing political campaigns in history. But I have to say that... Um, 2008 
in particular was truly a momentous year for all of us, for our country. It was a sea change in how we practice politics and who can play in it. And it was particularly exhilarating time for me personally. I had a front row seat to history, working for the first viable woman candidate for president, as well as the first successful African American candidate for president. One of, the, one of the best things about all of these firsts is that they surprised all of you young women a lot less than they surprised us up here on, on the panel. And the difference raises important questions. What's changed in politics and in business for women and minorities over the last 20 years? And why? Why is your experience going to be different from mine? What challenges remain? and what can you do to address them and eliminate them? I'd like to help answer some of these questions uh, by talking a little bit about my own father and the lessons that I learned from Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the hundreds of committed, talented women and men who helped get them elected. Um, my parents immigrated from Mexico to Chicago in 1954. My father, uh, and it's a, it's a common story, but I'm going to just tell you a little bit about it. My father, Santiago Solis, worked in a furniture-making factory during the day and drove a cab on weekends. At night, he mopped the floors of our parish school. My mother took a job in a commercial laundry across the street from our apartment. One summer, my sisters had to get a part-time job there, but with the heat and the fumes, they barely lasted three weeks. My mother worked there for 20 years and never complained. Um, on weekends, she answered the phones at our local community center, and together, my parents never earned more than $18,000 a year. My father instilled in us a very simple message, hazte valer, which means value yourself. Don't ever do anything to embarrass yourself or your family, he would say, and always work hard and do your best. And till this day, it's still the best advice I've ever gotten. My neighborhood was pretty tough, so my father kept us girls inside after school, and with all of his talk about the importance of education and really nothing else to do, I earned good grades. I won a scholarship to a high school across town, and I was one of the only few Hispanics at the school. Because it took so long to get back and forth from across town, I really didn't, couldn't join any after-school clubs or participate in sports, and because my parents were always working, they really didn't participate in any parent activities, and they barely knew any of my classmates. Um, it didn't stop me from graduating near the top of my class, but it did prevent me from being a true part of it. When you're 15, you understand the loneliness of being different, but you don't really grasp how much you're missing. I wasn't invited to sleepovers or parties. I didn't go on dates. My parents never met more, like I said, a few of my classmates. And for me, school was one world and home was another. Managing these two worlds became harder in college. After graduating high school, I was um, accepted at Northwestern. And due to some scholarships and some financial aid, I pretty much got a free ride, which was the only way I could go to college. Um, Northwestern was only about an hour away from where I grew up in Chicago, but in some ways it felt like Mars. Only Mars. Um, with an unparalleled curriculum, but also with a lot of parties, all sorts of kids, like from Greenwich and Beverly Hills. And honestly, I was embarrassed about where I came from. I was self-conscious about my clothes and my South Side accent, and I couldn't grab a bus to go home every afternoon. And there was no way to find that lonely balance I had managed to find in high school, and something had to give. So. I stopped valuing myself like I should have. I partied too hard, I stopped working hard in class, and I stopped wanting to go home. I lost my scholarship, married at 19, dropped out the next year, and was divorced by 21. I was a bright young woman at one of America's finest universities, but I was wrestling with the same insecurities my father felt every time he tried to speak his immigrants' English. My father lived in the United States for more than 40 years, but he never learned English because he was just too embarrassed by his accent. He was a patriot and an incredible father and a brave and strong man, but his approach to America was, not, was a lot like my approach to high school. It worked, but it was lonelier than it needed to be. 